Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez here. In the previous video I show you results that I have been able to obtain from my Pro 100 running on the Ink Products Continuous Ink System and their inks, which I really don't know what their original source is. It may be here in the USA. Now we're going to look at the 8550. 8550 is a tank type printer, eco tank they call it, and it uses 70 milliliters of ink per tank six colors including one black in dye and one black in pigment matte ink so that will help you when you decide to switch over to a matte media it will then trigger the use of the matte black i think it's probably using both but i may be wrong the deep blacks that it produces are majestic okay so again you're no longer limited to printing on only glossy or shiny or semi shiny type papers which is what dye inks excel at so let's quickly go look at the results that we have been able to obtain it's going to be all random i'm just going to quickly show you many different surfaces i'm not going to get into the details that i use for printing if you want to know that go back to my latest series of videos that i have done the past two weeks on the 8550 and there i go through all of the steps that i did to produce every one of these images so let's quickly take a look at this now this was a couple of shots, let me see, okay, a couple of shots that I did on Staples paper. Now this paper had sat around for quite a long time and I noticed that the base was a little bit yellow. It was turning a little bit yellow and that's happened before with a very old batch of paper that I had. But the results that I got taking into account that slight yellow stain on the uh, surface of the paper is due to the fact that OBAs burn out after a certain amount of time. And these I have owned for probably 10 years, this paper. And so that happens when you let paper sit around for a very long time, especially paper that contains optical brightening agents. But the image itself is perfectly neutral. This was done on the 8550 using black and white mode in the driver because the last time that I tried printing a monochrome image on the 8550, I didn't really have a perfectly linear neutrality. It kind of changed from the darkest to the middles to the highlights. So I decided, hey, I just noticed it has black and white mode. Let's go ahead and try that. And of course, that really helped out a lot as you can see. By the way, so here in the back it says EcoTank 8550. This is the standard image on matte paper for those of you who were maybe wondering. Here are some shots that I just did on a paper that I again discovered that I had. I didn't even know I had it. It is called Lumi Jet. What did I get on top of this? That's what I get for not taking care of my prints. Got something on it. Anyway, it is a texture paper, relatively heavy. It is called Charcoal R by Lumi Jet. Let me orient that correctly. And again, very, very deep blacks. Really, really gorgeous results. Uh, wide dynamic range. You look at this and you go, wow, that is really neat. All from a six color dye ink printer. Basically, you're only using five colors. You don't even have light magenta or light cyan. Okay, you have one gray and that kind of helps with the gradations as they refer to uh, of tonality changes, very gradual changes. It does help with that. You saw this before, I did it again on this printer and let me see this way and again it knocked it out of the park so again remember all 8550 from now on here's that shot again i recently did that one and again this is on the regular matte paper from epson and it looks like velvet i mean when you look at the surface it looks like velvet like it was printed on velvet 
like zero, zero, zero gloss or any kind of shine. If you scratch it with your fingers accidentally, you're going to actually add like a, like a burnishing. So don't, you know, treat it very carefully because it will do that. I have a couple of little marks right here, scuff marks, because I'm stacking them on top of each other. Here's a shot of the back of Nathan's Woods here. And again, done on glossy, uh, uh, I think it's Epson Glossy. Again, beautiful results. And I'm looking at all of this, you know, in regards to neutrality. Here is that charcoal art paper again. This is a painting that I did of a uh, restaurant front in Annapolis. And again, I I'm looking at this and wondering, okay, is this acceptable? Is this something that, you know, people will look at and go, oh, you know, this could be a little bit better. Oh, no. They look at this and they go, wow. And that's it. They don't say anything else. So once that happens, you know that your combination of printer and ink and paper is working. Can it do, what, can, what else can it do? Can it do uh, a transparency? Why, yes, it can. Look at that. This is a transparency. And here's the other one that I did. And it handles those transparent sheets perfectly. And this is kind of an off-brand from one of the office supply stores. Color rendition, spot on. I cannot believe how well that turned out. This one I did the other day. And it is matching the screen, amazing. That image from the beginning was very dark to begin with. The areas here, the highlight areas, are actually not even, probably just below mid-tone range. And yeah, it just killed it. Yeah. More matte media. I think this is the Canson. A lighthouse in the Chesapeake Bay, Maryland. So I'm running through all of these types of papers just to check whether the printer can handle them or not. And so far so good. What do I have here? A bunch of test images. Those can go here. Profile that I did for my Canson paper. I needed to do that just to help it along. This is a shot on glossy paper from Epson. It's a bunch of dishes on a rack. It's actually a color photograph. It is not a monochrome. And there's a little bit of color somewhere here that you can detect. It handled that beautifully. It did the, neut the neutral sections of it perfectly. And then the areas that contain a little bit of color, it did that as well. Full blown, you know, tree in the fall. My gosh. Look at that. And I believe this is... Um, the A sub paper glossy 17 by 11. I ran a test where I printed, I believe it was like six five by seven prints, all borderless. I reduced the expansion rate to almost minimum. I wanted to check the accuracy of the paper transport to make sure that none of the edges had a wide border and apparently it did a perfect job because I did not get any kind of sliver. So people sometimes complain about a sliver showing up even though they have a pretty substantial expansion rate on their driver. I reduced it down to almost nothing, the minimum, and again I ran 5x7s borderless and none of them have a sliver or even a hint of a white border. That's very good, very good to know. Here's a shot, I believe this is in Spain. Somebody provided me this, and again, just gorgeous, come on. It is amazing. The glow that this image has was translated perfectly to paper. And maybe on matte paper this would have been even better. But again, I was just, just constantly trying different things. This is on the watercolor uncoated paper. And you got to look at it at an angle so you get the sheen away from it. A very pastel image to begin with. And it just it's just dreamy. Let me put it... No, nope, this works better. It's just dreamy the way that looks. And I look at it. It's very heavy. This stuff is 
I mean like 300 plus weight uh, GSM. Huh, yeah. So this is again me printing on every kind of paper I could come up with. And primarily when I was printing on the glossy, I was specifically looking, look at this, I was specifically looking for any kind of uh, artifacts caused by rollers, because a few people have complained about that, and absolutely none, absolutely none. Here's a, uh, is that a duck in the middle of an iceberg? My gosh, what are you doing there? So I looked very closely. To see if there were any artifacts none at all another painting done on that uncoated watercolor paper from Canson you get that at any art supply store they have them it comes in a pad as uh, very cheap it's like depending on the size this was probably like 15 cents a sheet so there you go now when you have this in your hands and you you know are looking at it it is amazing it is, it is just gorgeous and when you frame it, it really looks great. It doesn't even look like a photograph anymore. It looks like a work of art. That's what I like about it. We started doing some larger sheets. Oh, I have an unprinted sheet right here as well. I better take that to the other room and use it. There's an unprinted sheet in the back. Take that out of there. Get out of there. This is sort of killed it because this region here is almost impossible to reproduce by a printer that does not have a proprietary blue ink like the Pro 1000 does. It's, it's just unbelievable the way that very limited ink palette on that 8550 was able to handle this ridiculous image. And again, I did it on glossy just to push it to its limits. This one here is on matte. It's a bunch of gigantic leaves that turn all kinds of colors in the fall. And again, it just killed it. It killed it because I look at these areas here. This is deep. This is very deep. And it was able to do that. Thank God for that matte black ink it comes with. That's the greatest idea they came up with. A beach shot. But let me show you what happened. You might be able to detect that this side is a little bit darker. That's because initially I printed it on the wrong side and I decided, oh, I better, I better cancel that. And I flipped it over to the correct surface. You got to do this. Wet your finger, press, and see how it sticks to the actual printable side. That's what I failed to do. And I was fooled by the look because it looks pretty much identical on either side. Canvas. Can it do canvas? Of course it can do canvas. Here we go. That is matte canvas, so you know you know that it, it will trigger the matte black ink. This is ridiculous the way this came out. Okay, let me get up closer. I want you to look at that. This is the way it looks on the screen. I have done this image way in the past. Uh, whenever I want to show you if a printer is capable of producing something super dreamy like this shot. This is crazy. Okay, last one. Panorama. This is uh, 13 by 23, I believe. I had to take a piece of paper from a 17 inch roll and then trim it longitudinally and then trim it to length so that it would be able to be handled on my 13 inch capacity 8550. It knocked it out of the park as well. So there you go. What else can we do? Well, you're able to print on discs. You're able to scan and copy and all kinds of things with it as well. So that's really not related to photography. So I'm going to go ahead and skip those aspects of that printer. But again, maybe I will print a, a, a CD or a DVD in the future just to show you guys how that is done, show you what software to use and so forth. But so far, it is amazing. It is the perfect printer for those of you who are concerned with the price of ink and are using the excuse of inks being so expensive 
and therefore I cannot print as much as I would like to print. No more excuses. The only expense you will have, really, the only true expense you will have is in media. You will be able to buy better media now because you're saving so much money on the inks. Now, yes, there are third-party equivalents available. Why bother? OEM, $18 for 70 ml of ink. And if you saw my last video that I dedicated to that printer, my levels have hardly dropped. Okay, so it's a very stingy ink as far as ink usage. I don't know why, but I'm very happy about that. So in the next week or two, I'm going to continue featuring this printer because at this point, yeah, the sad news is that I have been ignoring all of my other printers in my printer army because of that. It is just something I just cannot ignore. Like, why would I then want to print on this printer when I could get fabulous results on a printer that barely uses any resources and is able to produce fantastic results? And by the way, today Precision Colors will be shipping me the new boards for this printer. Basically, it is a redesigned board that will then allow you to not have to look at the sensors. You will see everything here. You will see a green light, meaning that channel has ink in it. Sufficient ink for you not to worry about topping it off. When that green light goes off and the opposite white light goes on, or yellow light I think it's going to be, goes on, then that means that channel requires topping off. Again, you will not have to look here any longer. You could have this tray sticking all the way out like this, and you will not have to bend your neck and have a look. How he's going to market this, I have no clue. All I worry about is I'm going to go ahead and install it and do a video on that as well. Okay, so that is it for now. I hope you enjoy this. Again, remember, Pro 100, great performer, great reputation. Mine has lasted nine years plus until recently. And the 8550, again, on the Epson side of things, great performer. And, of course, the huge advantage of it is no chips can use any ink you choose to use, although I do recommend OEM. In this case, I really recommend you use OEM inks because they are absolutely affordable. I think I'm going to be printing for a whole year before I need to add any inks to those tanks. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone, and bye-bye.